Well, in my opening statement, faith discarding humanity. With the heartbreaking event that occurred in the past week in Sialkot, Pakistan, the brutal murder of Priyanta Kumara, a Sri Lankan Buddhist and a father of two, I've been trying to wrap my head around this inhumane act and try to come to an understanding as to why is this occurring in the 21st century, in the day and age we are living. Early this week, I did attribute this to the lack of education by the people who, ha who should have educated these primitive Pakistanis and try to make them understand how wrong what they did is. Now you see after murdering him in broad daylight, that the Pakistani diplomatic circles are hard at work to ensure that the fallout from this does not occur. So what did, they, what did we see soon after that? Arrests were made. More than 100 people were taken into custody. The Prime Minister made Twitter statements condemning the act. While more protests in Pakistan by people who denounced this and held placards saying, sorry, Sri Lanka. And the very recent development where the murderers in Sialkot are raising over 100,000 US dollars to send to the family here in Sri Lanka as a token of, well, what? Hey, sorry, we killed your husband because we are idiot human excrements. Who, uh, who claim to follow the peaceful religion of Islam. And on the 3rd of December, humanity failed in Pakistan and stupidity prevailed. Inhumanity took center stage while humanity faded away. We all agree that the perpetrators who carried out these attacks are a bunch of uneducated morons. Or were they uneducated? Or did they actually execute a plan that they have been waiting for some time in order to execute? Most of us here in Sri Lanka who follow the Buddhist philosophy believes in karma. And I'm sure those people will have to face theirs one day. Let's leave it at that. But that's not what I wanted to talk to you about today. I want to shed some light on what we as humanity has become right now. Look at this horrifying picture. No, not at the lifeless body uh, or bloodied body of Priyanta Kumar lying on the street. We, we blurred the whole picture out of respect to the family. Look at the remaining parts of the picture. What do you see? Well, you obviously see a man in his final moments, far away from home, in the most vulnerable, most helpless moment of his entire life. What do all our faith teaches us? Whether it's Buddhist, Islam, Christianity or Hinduism, it teaches us compassion for humanity. But where is the compassion at this moment? Instead of compassion, we have mobile phones. Instead of helping this man, at least taking steps to protect him, at least doing the bare freaking minimum. These worthless cowardice Pakistanis gorge on the body of this helpless man and start filming it while displaying their primitive barbaric qualities. Is this what we become now? Is this what our religions are teaching us now? Is this humanity's future? One day Priyanta's kids will grow up and become men of our society. And one day they will see this inhumane act. Then they will form opinions of their own about what the people of Sialkot did and what they based it on. I hope there are right teachers and guardians along the way to guide those children on the correct path. I also have a bigger problem with our foreign service right now. What is the action taken by our foreign ministry to secure remaining Sri Lankans working in Pakistan? Priyanta was a foreign income earner for this country. Yes, the president condemned it, Pakistan prime minister condemned it. But what has the remaining people in our foreign service has done? Shouldn't the foreign ministry be more vigilant and do more in order to secure our people abroad? It's a joke as to how our High Commissioner in Pakistan has acted. Now look at this joke as per what the Pakistani media is reporting uh, today. The headline just reads out saying, Sialkot incident will not affect ties with Pakistan, Sri Lankan envoy. What? And, and, and down the story, this is the best part, which boils my blood to a certain extent. Says that, speaking to the media, the Sri Lankan envoy thanked the Pakistani people and government 
for condoning the gruesome murder of Priyanka Kumara, who was lynched by a mob on Friday over blasphemy allegations. Thanked the people of Pakistan. I understand we, as a Buddhist nation, need to respond to this inhuman act as per the Buddhist way. Just like Venerable Professor Madhaguna Bhati Sarathera said early this week on this very same show. Listening. Nahi vere na verani sammanti dha kudachana. Avere na cha sammanti esa dhammo sanantano. We should not get angry. We, we should be the model to the world in such such kind of incidents because uh, like others we should not squirrel we should not go to uh, hit the uh, muslims or we should not uh, try to say show this is as uh, some extremist uh, activity of a religion that was Venerable Professor Madhaguda Apeyadis Thera, who was a guest on the show uh, last Monday. Amnesty International, Transparency International, human rights bullshitters, the jokers at the UN, the clowns at the opposition. No oh, heck, everyone in the ruling party, where's your discontent over this inhuman act? Oh, it's in your heart. Don't want to display it don't want to say anything because it might trigger ethnic unrest in Sri Lanka, don't want to shout at the world and say this is bad, like how you did when a credible action was taken to ensure the safety of all Sri Lankans after Easter Sunday attacks, but showed it as something against the Muslims. Nobody is giving you enough money to scream on the subject because killing a single Buddhist doesn't generate enough funds from your Western sponsors. Oh, I feel for you. And what about you keyboard heroes, the liberal jokers? Didn't change your profile picture yet for Priyanka? Forgot to do that TikTok video highlighting the injustice in Pakistan for a human life? Because no one else did it? You're too shy to do it? Oh, it's not a catchy trend in the US yet, huh? You're waiting for Zach King to come up with a version with full visual effects and graphics. So then you might be able to understand how to do it. Life is hard, right? Well, at one point, as a nation, we got to cut the crap, flush the bull and make a stand. If your religion says to take a mobile phone and film it while a man is desperately fighting for his life, if your religion is calling to end a man's life because he does not buy into your doctrine, if your religion is calling you to act inhuman but preaches about bull on humanity, then my dear friend, that's not a religion, that's terrorism. All right, we got a lot more to discuss today with my panel, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ruth Bogulagama, and also human rights activist and rector of the Shri Pali campus, Dr. Uh, Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva. That's coming up shortly, but before that, Dani Dhuizanamasam joins me in the studio tonight with a look at the real story. Um, <laughs> I'm going to pose that same question that I asked you on Monday. Uh, what's going on? Why don't we see a sympathy from the liberal side? Because these are the guys who scream like if we go and, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, smile in a wrong way at, at a Muslim person or a minority. These are the guys who make a big C in Transparency International. They come up with statements after statements. Uh, uh, what is the other one? Um, all these uh, NGOs, they are like so vocal about it. Why do you think, w what's going on? Uh, why isn't that happening for, <coughs> for Priyanka Kumar? Well, again, I think the, the social media landscape has taken very few changes because I've been able to observe it for quite some time. And it is disheartening. It is disheartening as being part of the youth within this country and being part of, uh, uh, being, being observing how the world reacted to other incidences when either when it came to the invasion of Iraq or when things that were completely outsourced from our country, we were so woke, <laughs> we were so engaged, we were, it was, it, it, they didn't even have to make an effort to make things trending in our country, we did it. But we did, we did not see that when it came to this 
this sort of massacre and this incident. And I think that is something that we do explore in the real story as well when it comes to the story that is behind all of this, whether there's something bigger that is behind the scenes when it comes to this. So the atrocious crime in Sialkot took Sri Lankans by storm due to sheer inhumane nature. But is the murder of Priyanta Kumara part of a bigger issue brewing within this region? The economic challenges in South Asia in particular have been a complementary factor to the amelioration of certain extremist groups that in most instances consolidate to form terrorist organizations. This was quite evident when looking at the rise of the Taliban in Afghanistan, which had a historic context but gained traction due to rising poverty. The cause of the rise of extremism is multifaceted and finding its source is a process that has been studied for long periods of time. Most nations within the South Asian region have taken a strong stance against extremism, which is an effort that has been pushed for by Sri Lanka's current administration. A good atmosphere for ideologies outside mainstream politics have been allowed to rise up given the pandemic's influence on global supply chains. In order to understand this, the recent past provides some very good examples, even within Sri Lanka, which was manifested through the Easter Sunday attacks. Prior to moving to any conclusions pertaining to the Sialkot atrocity, it should be understood that the city in question was not a primitive or less urbanized area. It was quite the opposite. The data released by the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics in the year 2020 identifies Punjab, which is the province Sialkot is within, to be the most literate province within the country. The city of Sialkot alone holds a literacy rate of over 78% as per 2020. In terms of living standards, it comes third, led only by Lahore and Rawalpindi from the entire country. Sialkot is an industrial hub within Pakistan, becoming the country's largest sports and surgical goods exporting hub. Sialkot has 1,500 major and over 10,000 small industrial units scattered around the city and its suburbs. This goes to show that the 19 square kilometer city is far from being a secluded area with no reach to modernization. It is in this backdrop that the supporters of the Tariq e Labaik Pakistan group conducted this heinous crime. It must be understood that just in October this year, Prime Minister Imran Khan had released over 350 supporters of the TLP as a measure in favor of the removal of the organization's ban in the country. Saad Hussein Rizvi, the leader of the organization, was also released in November. The murder of Priyanta can be considered as one of the first public acts of discontent after the TLP group is now consolidating its effort against the government. The leadership has gone on to urge the people to vote for them in the upcoming general elections. The members who did the attack on the Sri Lankan was constantly chanting slogans of this particular party. So I want to share with you that no one can say that this is not an uh, attack uh, that is something political. It is uh, attack motivated by religious extremism. Imran Khan is a good leader. He has taken what you call case-specific action, that is against the individuals who uh, lynched and uh, burnt the Sri Lankan national. Uh, but those are individuals. But he should take decisive action against the mob. Unfortunately, the gravity of the act isn't displayed quite as explicitly as done by the Prime Minister from other parts of the government. The Defence Minister was seen making a form of justification of the act by suggesting it was the youth being emotional and shouldn't affect the long-term relations the TLP has with the government. <laughs> I think that statement uh, is very problematic. You, know, you can't just uh, trivialize it like that way. Right? Youth are always violent. You know, how, how on earth do you come to such kinds of uh, conclusion? And uh, they got angry and they did this. So that's fine. If you're angry, you just uh, go and butcher someone. That is not on. That is out of order. And I don't think that is the thinking of the Pakistan government. The Pakistan government has taken concrete, immediate steps. You know, we should not let emotions rule us. I mean, the reason should triumph over emotion at all times, especially in situations like this where there has been something absolutely tragic that we have witnessed. Another catastrophic incident was the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan for the second time, first in 1996 and now in 2021. A number of important parallels can be drawn between the situation in Pakistan and that of Afghanistan. Prior to the Taliban, individual extremist groups under the name of Mujahideen were present around the nation. Given their internal conflicts and years of external influences, the only consolidated organization to bring a certain amount of peace to at least regional areas of Afghanistan was the Taliban, which began as a student movement in Kandahar. Taliban is an extremist 
group, an insurgent group and a terrorist group because it continues to kill civilians. They are, they are using the Bamiyan Buddha images that range for target practice. The US invasion of Afghanistan in 2001 and the extended military influence with the so-called nation-building effort gave prominence to the Taliban's novel effort to bring together all types of Afghanistani nationals in order to rise up against the foreign military occupation. The ideology was far easier to sell as the general public was poor, without proper leadership, and US institutions didn't reflect the Afghanistani culture. Volatile situations created such as this and the most recent incident in Pakistan. It can be made clear that a growing contest between mainstream politics and domestic extremist groups that feed on people's emotions have sprung up. In extension, Bangladesh had also seen recent religious riots. It began after the circulation of a picture of the Holy Quran at the feet of a Hindu statue. Hundreds of people have protested in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka, calling for an end to religious violence. At least six people have died and several others injured. The picture, as in the case of Pakistan, was considered to be blasphemy against Islam. Police said more than 200 attackers beat and stabbed to death an executive member of the Temple Committee in the southern town of Begum Ganj, where members of the Hindu community were preparing to perform the last rites of the 10-day Durga Puja festival. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government has responded by temporarily blocking high-speed internet in several areas, deploying paramilitary units to some 35 of the country's districts, and arresting scores of people, including activists supporting Bangladesh's main opposition parties. These reports show that the situation in Pakistan is certainly not an isolated event and the threat of extremism is spreading far across the region of South Asia. In understanding this position, one can only credit the importance the current administration has given to reignite a sense of security within the country that saw a dramatic downturn during the previous government. My I believe this is the very same thing that we were addressing a few years back when it came to the current president coming into power to build security. And security being built, national security is not something you see every day, but when these incidences come about, you see that importance should be given to it. It also should uh, transpire from national security to regional security because I think what happened in Pakistan is, is a signal for the entire region that, it, that extremism might actually start popping up everywhere in, in the Sark region as well. As always, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to take a short uh, commission break. On the other side, former Foreign Minister Rohida Bogalagama and human rights activist Dr. Pratibha Mahanamaheva. This is a special presentation of Get Real. Be right back.